Hello, my wonderful, wonderful players. Well, as per your response to the alignment video, in this video, I'm going to be looking at the concept of alignment, but not specifically the different types of alignment, not yet. We're looking at the difference between lawful and chaotic and how it applies to your character and how you can use it to make your character more interesting. Now, the whole idea of lawful versus chaotic. Well, let's unpack lawful. What does lawful mean exactly? According to the book, it's someone who will follow the law. According to a whole lot of people, it's someone who is honorable. It is someone who sticks to their word, who will never break their vow once given. Well, it's all of those things and it's more. Now, the first thing that you need to do is you need to ask the GM, you need to ask her, listen, where do the alignments come from? Are they a universal alignment? So in other words, the, the, oops, the universe has said, this is good, this is evil, this is lawful, this is chaotic, and this is everything in between. Is it a universal alignment system or is it specific to the race, in which case it changes depending on your perspective? Most of the time, the GM will say it is a universal system. So that means it's a universal law. What does universal law mean? Well, again, it's something to unpack. Most of the time, it's you will never kill someone in cold blood, only in defense. You'll always try and find peaceful solutions to situations so that everybody comes out as a winner. You will stick to your word and your word is as good as your bond. And you will defend the meek as well as protecting those who can't protect themselves. There are a whole lot of universal laws which permeate throughout the system. And again, it's useful to chat to the GM and say, what is your interpretation of lawful? Because the alignment system, as we saw from the last video with just so many comments, there are so many ways of interpreting alignment. The best and safest bet is to ask the GM. So that's lawful. Chaotic is exactly the same. Now, if you look at the alignment system, you've got lawful over here and you've got chaos over here, and the two seem to compete with neutral right in the middle. Now, the idea of lawful being the antithesis of chaos, well, maybe yes, maybe no. The original intentions, of course, uh, were that they were the opposites of one another. The lawful character follows the laws. The chaotic character is anarchic and does what they feel is right at the time. Now, sometimes that's following the law. Sometimes that's not following the law. Both instances, however, the law has nothing to do with it. The character will act out of what they feel should be done in that moment. So that raises an interesting question between a lawful character and a chaotic character. A lawful character who is following due course, following due process, if the party now wants to rescue a rogue who's about to be hung by a sheriff because he's been convicted of a crime, the lawful character should by all rights not intervene because the law is being carried out. The rogue did commit a crime. Now this extends further. If there's a rogue in the party and the rogue is stealing from people, well, if it's a universal law that that's bad, the lawful character would need to do things to rectify it. Now again, far too often as players, we go, well, I know my character's supposed to be lawful. And he did find out that the rogue player who's chaotic stole something, but I, I'll turn a blind eye. You're wasting an opportunity for role playing. The idea behind the alignments was not just as a mechanic so that certain spells or effects wouldn't affect the character. The idea was also to motivate a certain amount of role play. So a lawful character and a chaotic character can exist side by side without any problems whatsoever. Remember, the chaotic character is not just someone who's mad or who does things on a whim. They do things according to what they feel is right at the time. Now, most of the time, that will probably align with what the lawful character wants to do anyway. It is only when the chaotic character starts to commit crimes, starts to violate the law that the lawful character holds true, that there's going to be friction. So how then do you unpack that friction? 
How do you then explore it from a narrative perspective? Well, that's a very good question. And it's written on the back of my notes here as to uh, what it's all about. So the idea of the lawful character is not that the law restricts the character. That's looking at it from the wrong perspective. What you should be doing is looking at the lawful character from the perspective of this is what my character believes is right. This is what my character believes is wrong. Will my character deviate from what is wrong or what is right? Will the character do that? No or yes. That's up to you. If it's a yes, you need to understand why. Why does your character believe that it is okay to break their law? What is it that's pushing them to that point? And if they are not prepared to break the law because whatever is requiring them to do so is not sufficient for them to believe that they can do it, then they shouldn't do it. Now, should they then report the fellow players' characters who are breaking that law that they hold so true, or should they turn a blind eye? If they turn a blind eye, that is being an accomplice, an accessory, that is allowing the act to happen regardless. So you need to examine very carefully, if you have a lawful character, how they interpret that law and how do they position it. And that's your role-playing opportunity, is how do they position it so that they can sit right with themselves. Now, I know I said this in the previous video, how do we use alignment to create story? The lawful character does this, the lawful character does that. It's not about stopping them from doing it. It's about figuring out how your character is going to accept it or feel morose or feel as if they have betrayed themselves because they allowed it to happen. At the same time, the chaotic character, which one assumes is the easier to play because, well, everything goes, there's nothing sacred. I feel like doing this today. I feel like doing that tomorrow. The chaotic character is the character that needs to rebel against the established norms. Now that to me is equally important. That is the idea of chaotic. They'll go here, there and everywhere except what they don't want to do is follow the law. Now that law could be interpreted as how to do things. So a chaotic character should be trying to challenge notions wherever they can. And when the party goes to a lord who says, well, I've got a quest for you, if you are interested. I need you to go and rescue my daughter. Uh, she has been taken by bandits, and if you can apprehend those bandits as well, then please do so, so they can be brought to justice. A chaotic character might look at the gold and go, yeah, we'll get the girl back. But do we need to bring the bandits back as well? Aren't they just trying to survive? Let's try and get the opinion of the bandits. Maybe we'll join the bandits and split the ransom. That's even better. Or maybe we'll take the princess to the other province where there's a better reward being offered by the prince who wants to marry her. The chaotic character should rebel against following authority. They are, after all, supposedly against the lawful character. So the lawful character should be looking for ways in which to follow the tenets of their law, but at the same time to not be too restrictive on the party. The chaotic character should be trying to bring about an element of chaos, which then brings us to the neutral character, the character that sits right in the middle. Now, what does that character feel with regards to the law or with regards to chaos? Again, this is where the alignment system becomes a little bit fuzzy. A neutral character will sometimes follow the law and sometimes go in an anarchic way, in a chaotic way. No, that's the definition of chaos, of chaotic. A lawful character won't deviate from their means. A chaotic character will. So where does that leave the neutral character? My opinion is that the neutral character is the character who makes the decision based on what is for the party the best option. Is it following the law or is it following the chaotic 
uh, alternative. Either way, the neutral party should sit right in the middle and should play devil's advocate to both sides. The lawyer who wants to follow the right path, why do you feel that we need to follow that path? I understand that you feel the law is important, but clearly in this case, the bandits only apprehended the princess because she was going to bring money for them for feeding their families. At the same time, joining the bandits is an open declaration of war against the Duke, the very man who hired you and placed his trust in you. Are you so dishonorable that you wouldn't return his trust? So the neutral character is the one who needs to play both sides. So in the dynamic of your party, the law character should be trying to do their very best to follow what they've agreed to. The chaotic character shouldn't give a fig about what they've agreed to and should go and do whatever it is that they want to do. But at the same time, that makes them fairly untrustworthy, doesn't it? The neutral character is the one who should be sitting in between, bringing both sides up on their failings and on their successes. So that, for me, is where the characters need to sit. The neutral character doesn't necessarily need to make any decisions, but the neutral character needs to point out where the deviation has happened. Because otherwise the party is only always going to be doing the right thing or is only going to scatter to the four winds and do whatever it is that they want to do because of their chaotic nature. At least that's my interpretation on the first half of the alignment system because obviously you've got the second half, the good and the evil. Now that we'll look at in the next video of course because we don't want these videos to be too long. But the idea is to then look at them separately and then in the next couple of videos after that to bring them together to see how this whole thing meshes and how it works so that we can just make better stories out of it and be guided by each one and perhaps to look at them and say well absolutely the lawful character doesn't have to always necessarily be the good character and the chaotic character doesn't always necessarily get to be default chaotic good which means I do the right thing but I do it in my own way wow even Robin Hood, people would argue, was chaotic good, but he wasn't. He followed his own law, his law being rob the rich and give to the poor. And he never robbed the rich to give to the rich or to keep for himself. That's not a chaotic character. A character character would sometimes give to the poor and sometimes keep it for himself and have a big party. And sometimes he wouldn't rob from the rich. He'd rob from the vulnerable because that's an easier target. So Robin Hood, you could argue, was lawful good, but he wasn't following Prince John's laws, except that he wouldn't have been following King Richard's laws either, because robbing is still robbing. Those are areas that one must explore and one must ask the GM continuously when you are creating your character. Is this how you interpret chaos or chaotic? Is this how you interpret lawful? Well, I hope these have been, this video anyway, has been useful perhaps in getting you to think just a little bit differently about lawful versus chaotic versus neutral. If it has, hit that like button. If you want to hear more, hit the subscribe button, of course, if you haven't already done so. And you can always join us on Patreon where we have transcriptions of some of these videos as well as extra bits and pieces for you. Uh, just as a way of saying thank you for being part of our ever-growing community. Until next time, I wish you the happiest of playing.